Our next guest is um, Matteo uh, Flamini, who is a fascinating um, innovator and an investor in um, biotechnology uh, in terms of trying to find alternatives uh, to fossil fuels. And it's a project he's been involved in uh, since he was 24. Um, but born in Marseille, he's also, some of you may know, um, a keen footballer who happens to have played for Arsenal, Crystal Palace, AC Milan, and indeed France. So um, I don't think we've yet to have anyone else who's combined such an interesting portfolio career at the Huxley Summit um, to come and join me. Let's have a chat. Um, you're very much invested and have been um, for more than a decade now in the idea of finding alternatives uh, to fossil fuels. Um, so just tell me briefly about how you came to invest in the company you did and set it up. Tell us a bit about that. So yes, I've been playing football for the past 15 years. I started my career in France at the age of 19, playing professionally. And then I moved to UK where I started playing for Arsenal for a period of four years. And uh, I moved to Italy where I played for AC Milan. And uh, at the age of 24, uh, I started, co-founded uh, this biochemical company. To make the long story short, what we're trying to do and what we tried to do at the time was <clears throat> to convert biomass, but more specifically the leftover of agriculture, to convert into uh, a molecule called levolinic acid. So I didn't have a... a an exciting life at the time, so I said, you know what, I'm going to make it more complicated. That's how I decided to, to take the challenge of uh, producing at industrial scale a molecule which was called levolinic acid, and then what we did is like go from biomass to the end product, which today we are producing so biosolvent. We also have close to 200 patents, and uh, mainly what we're doing is substituting petroleum product by um, a safer and more sustainable version will come from, from bio-based. So the main market we're targeting are industrial cleaning, home care, personal care, and uh, we have introduced to the market today these bio-based solvents. So as you say, it's, it's replacing what used to be petroleum-based um, chemicals in, on all these kinds of products. Um, I'm fascinated in how you came to think this was something you wanted to invest in, because you are very personally committed to these issues. You're a vegan yourself. Take me back a little bit to you, because I know you've got a Corsican connection through your parents, an Italian connection, and there's something about that which has helped shape your commitment to the issue. I mean, to be very honest, if I've known at the time it would take uh, that long, 11 years, to be on the market, I would have never started it. <laughs> um, let's say, because of my education, uh, at home, uh, documentaries were... Most of the things we were watching on TV also grew up by the sea, so I wanted to be part of the solution. That's why I decided at the time to, to found this, uh, this chemical company and uh, be part of the solution. Again, as I was saying before, if I knew it was going to take that much time and that much effort to be able to have a, a, commercial, a product to commercialize, I, I don't think I would have started it because it's, it's a long journey with, uh, with a lot of challenges and um, uh, it, it took a lot of time for me to, to finally be on the market and, and to start this exciting part where you can uh, finally have a product to sell. Um, we have been talking today, earlier in the day, about the challenge of companies that are trying to innovate in a marketplace which is based around things like fossil fuels and the way things have always been done. How difficult was it fundraising and, and getting the research backed along the way to this decade it took to develop the product? I mean, there are many challenges. I mean, the, the first one is obviously like uh, to finance it. I've been lucky to, to play football as a professional and I was able with my co-partner to, to finance it uh, ourselves because what happened is like on this field is uh, if you are on an early stage, no, we can't finance it. Then if you are before, I mean, the, the pilot plant, we cannot finance it. And then, uh, I mean, basically you become uh, um, able to be, uh, to, to let's say, secure some financing only when you are already on a, on a commercial phase. And when you are already on the market, obviously, like I would say that the easier part, okay, then after you also have to convince the big, uh, the big corporation, the big corporation, then they have to get rid of the harmful chemical for people, but also for the planet by, uh, by some substitute. And obviously, when you introduce a new product, you also have a, a premium to pay. I mean, we have seen that with um, the solar energy. At the time, everyone was talking about solar energy. and It was going to be much more expensive. Now, solar energy is, is uh, competitive to, compared to oil. So obviously, when you open a new market, when you have a new product, you also have a, 
a time of adaptation where you move from a specialty to a commodity. But because also I believe today you can have some bio-based products which are price competitive, I mean efficient, and also provide some safety solutions, that's why I mean we have a, a very interesting uh, proposition. Uh, where have you got to in terms of how um, this product, the acid, is being used? You said that it's got, um, it's being used in things like kind of industrial cleaning and so on. What was the jump from having something you knew would work to actually getting it taken up and put into products? I mean, we are focusing on markets such as industrial cleaning, home care, personal care. I mean, for different reasons. The first one, because you have some regulation which are coming from the regulators and uh, phasing out some of the harmful uh, petrochemical products such as NMP or methylene chloride. So we are taking advantage of the regulation. The other advantage we are taking is the fact that uh, you have some massive pressure now coming from the, from the customers. People are getting more and more educated of, about what is good for them or not, and they are able to make a better choice. So because of this pressure, also you have like the big corporations have to adapt. And we are talking about like with some of the biggest, and obviously like they are all trying to reformulate to be much more compliant with the regulation, but also with the demand of the new customers. One of the big issues that has emerged is how far in tackling things like you know, climate emergency. It's got to be up to governments and big corporations to just do it. And actually, we should stop worrying about individuals you know, and straws um, and that this is a kind of false focus. You're, you challenge that idea, don't you? We need to have a 360-degree approach. So it cannot be only on one side, government and corporations, and believing that, well, OK, we're going to sort it out. I mean, of course it will be helpful if they are part of the solution and they can finally deliver some, some, real, some real action. But for me, I believe uh, people out there have to be part of the solution and we need to empower them. Then if you ask me how do we empower them, I think it's also important to communicate about climate change maybe a different way. Because when you work hard every single month in order to feed your family at the end of the month, I mean, and we, I mean, tell you we need to solve this, uh, this crisis of climate change, it's maybe difficult for you to understand it. So I think it's important to maybe break it down, climate change in different, uh, different problems and also bring some solutions. So if we start speaking about pollution, I mean, pollution, it's, it's irrelevant to all of us. We all live in, a, in a big cities, and if I start telling you that pollution is killing 4 million people every year, then I feel like, okay, I mean, that's relevant to me. I want to, to find a solution. Then health. If we start telling people, uh, we had a very interesting uh, lunch before, and uh, if you start telling people, okay, uh, we need to reduce our consumption of animal protein for the planet, the reality is some people don't care about the planet. So how do you address this message to the people who don't care about the planet? Maybe we should start telling them that having a more balanced diet in order to uh, improve the, the lifestyle can also be um, could also be one of the solutions. So depending on who you address your messages, I think it's important to also um, have a different, a different approach in terms of communication. We also know the importance of telling stories that engage people to try and make a, a big uh, impersonal issue feel personal and real. And obviously, I've, I've already said it in introducing you, you're in a unique position as someone who has a level of fame that comes with you know, your sporting career. And I wonder how you have found yourself using it um, in, in raising awareness around these issues, around environmentalism that you care about. I believe, uh, especially these days, we have a lack of, lack of trust between, I would say, the people and, uh, and maybe government and even big corporation. And um, I've been playing uh, football for a long period of time, and it's true, I have a certain platform. And I believe, uh, as outlet, we have a social responsibility. Media, they also have a social responsibility, because uh, they have the, the potential to influence people and to influence people to do good out there. So yes, that's true, I've been trying to use my platform to try to influence people to, um, to do good out there. And of course, I've been talking about climate change. But I think what's important, more than creating awareness today, is to provide solutions. I really believe that small changes on a big scale can have a, a real impact. That's why, I mean, I believe uh, sport, which is one of the only, I would say, industry who can bring people together, has a real role to play. Uh, and the other key issue is around climate emergency and, and corporate responsibility is this challenge of what time scale people are thinking of. So, you know, we talk about setting long-term goals. We talk about, you know, maybe 10 years to set a target to try and achieve. And yet we know that many corporations 
uh, forced to operate on a very short-term focus on shareholder profit, on returns on investment. Given your experience in your company, how far have you felt able to challenge the short-term attitudes that seem to dominate in the corporate sector? That's a very good question. I think here we need to rethink the, 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 the capitalism system. I mean, I think we should be able to, to also value, I mean, uh, the good that a company can do on, on environment or can do on, on a social. And uh, that's something which uh, today, I mean, we only value a company because of the, of the profit uh, the company is generating. I think that's something which we'll have to change in the near future. Um, but also, I agree with you. I mean, it's difficult to, to have this uh, long-term uh, approach and also even for the people. I mean, like when you tell somebody, wow, in 2030 or 2050, we will have to face this problem. I mean, like... Um, someone is already thinking about what I'm going to have to do at the end of the month. So if you tell the person you need to think about like 20, 30 years up front, it's very difficult to have this person um, to kind of empower this person. So I think is uh, what we should be doing is more of, of course, long-term approach, but also like maybe some shorter, shorter, shorter targets. Given that it took, what, about 11 years to get to where you are now in terms of this particular company and this, this product, um, what are your thoughts about where you go next with your role in business? I mean, let's say now um, I'm involved in a day-to-day in -day, uh, operation of the company. I mean, I was still playing until last, last June. So I have an important question at this point is like, uh, do I'm going to continue playing football or do I'm going to focus mainly on, uh, on the business? That's one of the, the questions I'm starting to, to ask myself. And then the second thing is like focusing on, on the commercialization of the product. And that will go by interacting by, the, by some, uh, some of the, the big corporations out there. And that's how it will have to be, to be done by setting up some, some joint venture, some collaboration, where basically instead of fighting the big guys, I mean, uh, the idea is to partner with them. Instead of fighting the big guys, perhaps we need to partner with them, which I think is very much a theme that's emerged from our, our conference today. But I would like to thank Mathieu Flamini. Thank you so much. Thank you.